of American education and the impact on American youth. Um, the reason I chose this topic is because I am an education major, so I wanted to learn more about the history of education in the U.S. During the early 20th century, socializing the American youth through progressive education was essential for the newly industrialized country with large cities teeming with immigrants because it focused on training skills related to real life experiences. The impact of education on American youth was significant because progressives such as Jane Addams, John Dewey, and Stan Woodcock helped modify American education to include socialization. Primary sources that I used were all by John Dewey. Um, the Child in the Curriculum and the School and Society, Experience in Education, Democracy in Education, and Introduction to Philosophy of Education. Dewey was a great writer. He wrote several books on subjects about education. He wrote about his beliefs about the combination of theory and practice and the importance of socialization. Secondary, secondary sources that I use are the therapeutic state justifying government at centuries end, the transformation of the school, Dewey on education appraisals, American progressivism, a reader. Um, my favorite book out of all of these was The Transformation of the School by Lawrence A. Creeman. This book was a great read because it helped me understand the triumphs, struggles, and tragedies in the history of progressive education. It gave me a thorough examination of progressivism and its effect on American education. The movement still influ influences education today, and the book does an excellent job of explaining that. Some background information. Um, during the early 20th century in the United States, there were several national reform movements, um, which is now known as the Progressive Era. There are a few different varieties of progressivism that focused on receiving governmental aid and improving American life. Individuals were involved in the reforms known as, are now known as progressives. They focused on issues such as education, labor matters, women's rights, and social justice. People were immigrating to the U.S. all around the world from Russia, Italy, Austro-Hungarian Empire, just to name a few. As the population grew, there were more children who needed to receive an education. The increasing number of immigrant children in the U.S. caused educators to try to Americanize all students who were in the classroom. Progressives wanted to focus on teaching civic and moral duties. Corporate greed did not uphold the traditional American values that many cherished. Children under the age of 15 worked for extremely low wages. Child labor drew attention to such social inequality. In the early 20th century, progressives worked tirelessly to improve the system of education so that it would include, so that it would socialize all youth, including immigrant children and prepare them for the newly urbanized and industrialized America. Progressive education that socialized American youth was promoted as the light for children that would replace child labor and factories. Progressives wanted schools to become incubators that would prepare groups of individuals to develop a vibrant democratic society. Through progressive education, students can be, could be encouraged to participate in opportunities where they would learn about democracy. Traditional education is rather structured and controlled while progressive education is unrestricted, unstructured, and student-centered. Traditional education teaches the subject while progressive education focuses on teaching the student. The two pictures that I use shows a traditional classroom and a progressive classroom setting. Um, traditional is all the students are lined up um, sitting at their desk and a progressive classroom setting where it's more, um, it's opposite of traditional <laughs> education. The progressive education movement occurred from 1915 to 1952. It was established because many social reforms disapproved of the current traditional style, style of teaching, which did not include socialization. 
In the traditional classroom setting, learning for young students consisted of facts already featured in the textbook. Education for the American youth in the early 20th century was based on methods to produce useful citizens. Progressives struggled to extend programs to include realistic components into education. Education, therefore, is a process of living and not a preparation for future living. That quote is by John Dewey. John Dewey was an inspirational academic philosopher of progressive education in the U.S. during the early 20th century. He was born in Vermont in 1859 and graduated from the University of Vermont in 1879. Five years later, he earned a Ph.D. in philosophy from John Hopkins University and taught as a professor at many notable universities, including the University of Chicago. Dewey influenced the field of education and worked very hard to improve education across the board. He analyzed both traditional and progressive education and asserted the schools needed to teach individuality and learning primarily from experience. He was a spokesperson for progressive education and fully supported the progressives' campaign to include socialization into the curriculum. Dewey's influence on socializing education dominated the progressive education movement. And educational theorists, Dewey believed that education was more than the mere memorization of facts used in books. His role as an educator transformed the nature of education in public schools. He was interested in pedagogical theory and finding new and diverse methods of teaching for the classroom. He established a laboratory school in 1896 where he tested progressive methods and pedagogical schemes of teaching. I have a picture on here um, on the bottom. It's a picture of his school, his laboratory school. Um, Dewey was concerned with the social outcomes of education and had a great interest in the ways in which education could enhance democracy. He strongly urged for schools to move beyond the traditional way of teaching. He developed an educational theory centered on experience and felt that it would provide students with the ability to grow. Dewey believed that experiences would definitely lead to a noteworthy contribution to society. An acceptable education must include social determination and individualism. Dewey disapproved of traditional education because it, he felt that it lacked a complete understanding of the student's needs. The curriculum focused on content and did not focus on actual learning process. He thought that a greater attention to individual growth and development was necessary. Furthermore, he encouraged new school agendas that included health, citizenship, and vocation. He believed, he believed that teaching how to adapt to industrialization was essential in order to have a constructive social change. The student is the most important factor in education. Dewey's priority was a child-centered education for all students in public school. The perfect curriculum for Dewey was meeting the child's needs and teaching the child at the child's own speed. His demand slowly entered the classrooms, but at first primarily at the local level. His educational ideals spread pleasantly and more public schools were providing balanced lessons in the classroom and were mean, that were meaningful to all children. America's future will be determined by the home and the school. The child becomes largely what he is taught. Hence, we must watch what we, what we teach and how we live. That's a quote by Jane Addams. During the late 19th century, during the late 19th century and the early 20th century, one of, the, one of many great leaders for the progressive cause was Jane Addams. Like John Dewey, Addams wanted education to provide socialization for students and move away from the traditional way of teaching. She is the founder of Hall House, where many different programs were offered, such as English classes for immigrants. And I have a picture on my PowerPoint of Hall House. Education needs to be stimulating, active, and engaging for all students. Adams wanted children working in factories to at least become knowledgeable of the history of the industrial world of which they were unfortunately a part of. She believed that children should receive an education, that all children should receive an education. Adams supported smaller classes in schools, 
Education was important to Jane Addams, and she recognized the need for a social outlet for the energetic abilities that was so vital for young children. The great social maladjustment, which was a lack of socialization in the school, was an issue that needed to be addressed, preferably in an educational setting. Young people were unable to manage social situations due to the lack of socializa social socialization in the curriculum. The first years of a student's precious life, which both John Dewey and Jane Addams recognized, is the best time to instill social skills that can benefit one to aspire to do more in life. Hall House was the perfect setting for instilling socialization. Adams opened up Hall House with the motive of, of obtaining social and educational advantages for young people. Other things being equal is the person who can lift his work up to the plane of the intuitional and inspirational who achieves greatness, both in his work and his, in his career. That's a quote by Stan Lukov. In 1919, Stan Lukov, an educator, was particularly interested in educational reform and wanted to expand his associations for advancement of experimental schools and new schools. He believed that the goal of progressive education should be to help schools develop a plan where educators would teach the necessary lessons pertaining to real world situations. Like John Dewey, Cobb wanted to advance progressive education and improve the school setting system in the US. He believed that having an attractive lesson and materials to discuss in class would be effective, would be an effective way for students to learn. He wanted the schools to incorporate methods that would spark professional interest in the student, which would serve him well in the professional world. He was a headmaster at the Chevy Chase School, where he provided a great deal of work in creative arts. Cobb founded the Progressive Education Association, which started off with members being parents and teachers, but eventually consisted of professionals as members. The association gave progressive education structure, power, notice, and passion. The PEA contributed to the development of American education in the early 20th century. Between 1890 and 1920, progressivism intensely tried to make changes for all people who were struggling to be heard. Trying to get all children to receive an acceptable education was a challenge. Education, as progressives believed, is a necessity of life. What nutrition and reproduction are to psychological life, education is to social life. Many reformers worked relentlessly to ensure an effective education for children living in the U.S. New labor laws prohibited children under 16 from working from the workplace so that they, as Dewey and others prescribed, would have a child-centered education in school. Life within the United States improved as children were no longer wedged in, fa in factories. The impact of education on American youth was important because progressives, progressives such as John Dewey, Jane Addams, and Stan Woodcock helped modify American education to include socialization. Slowly, schools began adapting ideals into their classrooms. During the early 20th century, the Board of Education for Illinois schools began restructuring its schools by providing students with opportunities to progress individually. In the classrooms, there was an increase on socialization and activities that allowed students to express themselves freely. Assignments were designed according to the interest of the student and not the comfort of the teacher. This was a huge improvement and schools were gradually progressing. Progressives were very impressed and could see that progressive concepts were becoming a reality. John Dewey, Jane Addams, Stanwood Cobb's achievements signify a key point in progressive education. Progressives wanted schools to teach honesty, cleanliness, neatness, order, promptness, manners, and the responsibilities and duties of a citizen. Progressives succeeded in extending school programs to include socialization into education. 